Hey, welcome back to Acoustic Interlude. I'm John McDonnell, and for this session, we're back inside our Studio A, and here's an old buddy, Mudbone. And it's the writing on the wall that drives me crazy. It always makes me call a good thing bad. Those long lines in the mirror Remind me daily That the cost of having ain't worth the price of being had You see I took out on the highway just this morning them bayou sounds calling out my name Destination down below New Orleans And the crazy loving arms of a Cajun queen Oh, but don't you fall in love with me, sweet darling Cause it's up and off and on the road I go I'll be halfway across Texas before your morning coffee That old Albuquerque sunset will start the show And it's the writing on the wall that drives me crazy it always makes me call a good thing bad Those long lines in the mirror remind me daily That the cost of having ain't worth the price of being had Looks like nothing gonna hold me down And I wake up in some other town There's something, someone's always stealing my heart away But what keeps me going out here rolling Is knowing I'll be back someday So by the time the morning sun hits Colorado and them buds soak in an early ray of light Those rocky mountain peaks will cast a shadow low On a delta heart that cherishes the sight Oh, it seems like every time I climb back onto that me to a place I want to stay to times and things and places full of good people and then I climb back on and it carries me away and it's the writing on the wall that drives me crazy it always makes Call a good thing bad Those long lines in the mirror Remind me daily That the cost of having Ain't worth the price of being had No, the cost of having Ain't worth the price of being had No, the cost of having Ain't worth the price had. Yeah, that song is about riding down the road too much. I, I do a, a lot of that. So we have a good time, though. I do about five to 7,000 miles a month, and I'm always leaving a time or a place or a thing full of good people. And I'm always headed to 
the same thing. So that's what the good thing bad is. And it's a, it's a bittersweet thing, but I, I have a great time doing what I do. I love getting to see everybody while I'm out there. But it is a lot of work though, which leads me to my next tune. You know, Van Morrison took a Irish folk tune and he turned it into a funk tune and that sort of fits the principles of the record. So I was happy to put it on this, this record. It's a song called I've Been Working. <laughs> so hard Oh, I've been working I've been working so hard But when I come home I just want to make love to you When I come home I've been grinding Grinding all night long. Eighteen hours grinding all night long. But when I come home, I just wanna make love to you. When I come home, I say, woman, 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 woman. Woman, 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 you know you make me feel so good. I say woman, 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 woman. Studio A at WUWF. That is a great Van Morrison tune, man. I love it. You nailed it. That was Thanks. great. Thanks. Well, welcome, man. Uh, you were here once before right at the tail end of 2016, and right. you were telling me all about this big recording project involving two different CDs right. and part one, Rivers, right? right? That was almost ready to come out the last time you were here, but now you've got both out, right? Part two's out now. We released that this past January, and it's it's moving up, so we're having fun. Now, tell me the concept, all right? There's something that unifies the two parts, right? Right. Well, you know, I'm a music historian, and I wanted to sort of bookend 50 years of music evolution in America, and so I picked 1927 and 1977 because 
musically, those were about as far <laughs> apart as you could imagine, but it took 1927 happening in order to make 1977 happen. In part one, we took all the Delta blues, bluegrass, and gospel influences from early 20th century American roots music. We showcased them in their individual forms as well as their combined forms. And then uh, part two, that's just a, that's like a, whereas part one's a riverboat trip in 1927, part uh -huh. two is a road trip in 1977. <laughs> and that's like you got Bob Seger and James Brown in the back seat telling you what to play. <laughs> That's a 13-piece band, six-piece horn section, Man. all sorts of things going on. So it gets funky. I bet it does. We have fun with it, for sure. Yeah. Now, the last time you heard, too, we talked a little bit about um, your experiences growing up. And it's kind of unique. And something you told me really stuck with me. You said that when you were growing up, you saw and heard all the influences from, like, traditional blues, African-American traditional blues, and then you had a lot of family, I believe, and friends that were doing blues and gospel. I remember, I think you're, you said your dad was a, a musician? Well, it was my, I come from a very musical family. My whole family was real musical. I was born mm -hmm. into a gospel family and to a bluegrass family as well. And uh, up in Northeast Arkansas, we had a great time uh, exploring those sides of the music. But the river that I, I grew up next to is the Black River in Northeast Arkansas, and it's the dividing line between the Ozark Mountains and the Mississippi Delta. So while you're on one side of the river, all the music goes. <laughs> and over on the other side of the river, all the music goes. And it didn't take long growing up to realize that it takes sediment from either side of the river washing into the river to make the river the river, you know? Sure. So you know, American music is that. For 300 years, it's been European Irish music forming in the mountains and, and simmering into bluegrass and, and what would be country mm -hmm. music and Bantu African music coming in through the Delta and turning into blues and rock and roll. And, you know, for 300 years, our culture, our individual cultures of music have been combining to create the common thread that maybe has held this whole thing together for 300 years. Sure. Yeah, well, you said your mission was to get people to see that, the connection. It's not just black, it's not just white. It's the same thing, two different, you know, views of the same thing. It all thing. started in one place. Yeah. You know, there's always a first person to start anything, and I think music is the same. So it all comes from one place, and it takes all of us shaping that one thing and honing <laughs> it into what we want it to be for it to, sure, absolutely. For it to communicate to people like it does. And, and that's that's one of the things, you know, growing up, I would leave my bluegrass family. My, my dad moved to Teoc, Mississippi when I was a kid. Yeah. And it's where Sun House, yeah. uh, a lot yeah. of folks were from around Teoc. B.B. King was born in Itabina, you know, 15 mm -hmm. minutes down the road. And so I thought everybody had a B.B. King in their backyard growing <laughs> up. I, I would go down there and I would learn, you know, learn the blues. And, and I'd go back up to Arkansas to my bluegrass family and they'd, They'd be, son, you, you're bending them strings an awful lot now. You need to, you need to not bend them strings so much. But... It all it all goes together to me. Sure. So what do you got planned coming up during the spring and summer? Just Well, I'm touring to promote the record. I'm having a great time doing that, but we're shifting gears. You know, this is a story that I plan on spending probably what time I have left telling to people. I've been writing a book for a couple of years, a historical-based fiction on, on the subject, on mm -hmm. 300 years of musical explosions here in the United <laughs> States and... Uh, just just as many ways as we can get this story to people, we're going to do. That sounds great. We're talking to Mudbone from our Studio A at WUWF. Got a couple more tunes.